Hey guys, Banana Luck here. Welcome back to another Watch of Realms video. We are going to take a closer look at this weekend's banner uh, with a couple of things going on with the nascent banner, the normal Crazy 2X, the Lot Thinness and Magda one, as well as the Lugaru uh, Araka banner. Uh, specifically, we want to look, look at the Lot Thinness one because it's a new unit. So, the big news out there is that they changed this guy's range. He used to be a 3 tower attacker. Uh, right now it's only 1 tower instead and yeah, you only get the 3 towers when you do your ultimate and he becomes in the range, range unit instead. Not sure if he hits air here but yeah. He did have very good stats, that's why I noticed and apparently BP wise is not too far off as well from most of the top units like Jira and Maul. 7.2k attack is very good and uh, probably going to be a very good guild boss unit as well and we look at his talent first when an ally uses the ultimate hero gains one stack of viscount's flame up to five stacks additionally grants crit damage increase to the ally if they belong to the infernal blast so viscount's flame basically uh, increases his own crit damage by 25 percent you can get up to 125 percent boost and then additionally grants crit damage increase of the same 25% to allies if they belong to the Infernal Blast. And the Viscount Flame doesn't expire. I believe it expires with the ultimate. Whereas this one uh, is gone in uh, 20 seconds. Basic attack is magic attack. Uh, one enemy, one tower range as well. And then his first passive basic attack has a 25% chance of dealing... 180% damage and inflicting stun on the target and the chance doubles during the ultimate that goes up to 50% and this is uh, 270 damage 270% damage in total uh, looks like this stun has a 3 tower range so not sure how that works because uh, you will have to launch the attack before the stun gets inflicted so I don't know maybe it's a bug here they should have updated it to reflect the usual attack range. And then his second passive increases penetration by 7% for each burning stack on the target. And this goes up to 7 stacks. Uh, Inferno faction units, most of them have some burning uh, effects on their own. And bear in mind that burning stacks across different units. So it makes sense why he has this... Uh, uh, skill here and then uh, his ultimate increases attack by 40% doubles the effect of Viscount's flame gained by the hero so that means that the crit damage goes up to 250% extra and then upon activation deals a 600% burst damage one time to one target in range then changes to range attack and removes all stack of Viscount flame from the hero when the ultimate ends Attack increase goes up to 50%, the burst damage goes up to 800, and the skill cost goes to 900, which is fairly average, nothing too low or too high, but he does have a pretty high cost at 23. And then Awakenings increase the base chance of Blade of Treachery by 5%, so this goes up to 30, and then it increases to 60, and then this stun that he has also can inflict burning, which just synergizes with his second passive insidious blaze because there's no other thing in his kit that does burning and then five percent attack expected for high base attack unit and whenever infinite blast ally uses the ultimate the talent switches to granting crit damage increase to them so the crit damage increase goes up to 20 goes up to 50% but I'm not sure why the wording is a bit weird here yeah it basically just doubles it but they phrase it in such a way like it's a change in the way it works because over here it just says that when they get their ultimate they get 25% damage increase so yeah a bit of a mediocre A3 to be honest I mean, it's going to benefit the allies more than Lord Fitness himself. A4, that's penetration, as usual. Then A5, when the ultimate ends, there's a 50% chance to re 
within Viscount's Flame, which uh, basically just keeps his damage going on by the extra 125% crit damage. So his kit synergizes very well with Guild Paws, obviously, because a uh, crit damage increase is very much favored there. And we take a look at the sources of burning that people typically use in Guild Boss. If you have Sokadens, then it's going to be great, right? Because uh, he has his own stack of burning. I don't think he has multiple layers of it. It's just one, yeah, one stack of burning. And then beyond that, uh, you have other units like Pyros when he does his ultimate. Uh, yeah, he does inflict burning, but no burning in his usual kit. That's the bomber. So Lord Fairness will probably work way better with uh, Sokadens. And then you have other units like Anai, multiple stacks of burning, Mika as well, Zilitu obviously, and Hex. So if we just stick the average, uh, you have Twin Fin. Tetrum maybe, Hex, Zilitu, that's going to be 3 stacks of burning, just on its own, and then uh, 4 stacks if you get Lord Furnace's A1, and yeah, I don't think there's any other stacks of burning, and Hex isn't even going to be deployed under Inferno units, you're going to want to deploy him on the Piercer faction instead. So... It feels like they are force feeding you to really use Anai, uh, even though she's not really that meta of a unit. I do foresee that Lord Fitness at A1 can do decently in uh, Boris Codex because of that crazy multipliers that he has, as well as the very uh, crazy base attack at 7.2k. But anything out of Cube Boss or Boris Codex, he starts to fall really hard because of this really awful range. If he had that 3 tower range combined with this stun that he does, he could be fairly decent in like GVG for example, even though there are no good Inferno tanks there. Uh, but I do see that his penetration kit will make him do really well in um, Samra. As you can see from Twyla, who had 80% penetration, doing really well in Samra too, so... Lord Fairness will probably be very uh, amazing there as well, along with Cube Boss 1, but the struggle here is that because of that nerf, you're not going to be able to use him anywhere outside of those areas where, you know, he's not going to be in danger. Because one tower range basically means that you can't use any defenders. You can compromise by putting him at the back and only having his ult uh, ultimate doing damage, but I don't think that's the most optimal thing to do. Many other units that can substitute him in terms of doing that instead. So, yeah, he really looks like a single target biz, as well as the control that he does, and just overall benefiting the Inferno faction, but I think the struggle here is that the nerf to his range really impacts where you can use him, other than Guild Boss. Uh, he's probably even going to be great for Inferno Faction Trials as well, but yeah, I think beyond that, you won't really see him anywhere else. And Awakenings, A1 is I think the best one because of the 5% chance increase and also the extra burning inflict. And A3 is a bit iffy, not sure how great this is. Uh, I do feel that A3 and A1 could have been swapped in this instance, unless I'm reading this skill incorrectly. And A5, just overall damage boost, but having RNG involved, uh, I just don't like that as a part of the kit, because we can see from Dolores, 80% chance to restore rate from her talent, but you know, she barely does it at times. So that's not finished, then Magda as well, uh, she was in the legendary hero pack thingy that uh, people got where you could pick your choice of heroes so that's what i was saying right she's already in this weekend's banner so you don't need to summon for her and yeah she's a great unit specifically in this passive where she grants 20 percent uh sorry yeah 20 percent damage increase and 15 percent penetration which is going to be amazing for single target arena so as Conqueror's Codex, and if you don't have any decent units, she's going to be great for gear rate 1 as well. So it's an 
All right, Banner. But I think with Lord Finis nerfed at the moment, then uh, yeah, that's a bit questionable. And I think uh, it's also going to depend on how your nascent banners go and whether this was stuck with the Lord Finis banner. So if Lord Finis is not a part of the banner, then you know if you're lacking not too many heroes, nascent summons are going to be a good one. We are probably going to do another video on that uh, once we have confirmation of how the banner works to determine whether this is a good banner. Combined with the fact that some people are still holding on to their prime legendary hero picker, uh, hopefully to get a lot from there so that you know they can select other choices in that uh, pack that everyone got. And then there's Araka Lugaru. Um, honestly, it's just a skip in my perspective because uh, this guy's uh, probably a bit. For what's about to come, especially with the Ingrid Adia banner uh, in the horizon that you know people have all caught a glimpse of. So yeah, that's gonna be it for the uh, video. I do think that uh, I'll probably want to see more content creators testing this. I think the approval for them to get the content launch is like today. So we'll need to see what they say before we can proceed any further uh, as to whether he is as good as what his kit describes, especially in Guild Boss 1 and 2, but he's definitely going to be crippled with that Paladic one tower range that he has updated now. So yeah, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below, more than happy to answer them. And yeah, good luck on your summons if you're doing any, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.